All right, gang. Welcome back. It's second week of February. We've got a lot <clears throat> going on. We're uh, we are feeding the cows in the cow barn. Got 200 cows. Grew some milk. So I got to tell you, <clears throat> for a cow barn, this this is a TARDIS. Uh, TARDIS XL. It's a forage. It's a forage wagon. Come on. A little delay there. So this is a TARDIS XL. It's 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 just a it's by Almamatana. It's just a forage wagon. I mean that's all it is. But I tell you what, it makes a great feed wagon for the cow barns. Because it's a reverse opening. If you ever been in these cow barns, you understand that there is no room. Just show you. There's no room to dump. So yeah, this. Uh, let me get the trigger here. There it is. Now I'm feeding them with with a little bitty uh, where small tractors at. So I got this little Maxim case, Maxim. CVX 145. It's only 175 horse. I got two of them. This other one is uh, down at the uh, greenhouse farm. But this works perfect for a little tractor to pull a feed wagon and uh, get inside this cow barn. Now I gotta see how much. I know my, my cow barn was in pretty bad shape here. Ah, oh, crap. I filled it up with hay. All right, well, I'm going to have to eat hay for a little bit. Silage and green went downhill. This That's one bad thing about this barn. It's a 500-cow cow barn, but it doesn't have very much food capacity, so you got to kind of be careful. I, I give them too much hay. Um, so silage is down, grain's down, but that's all right. They, hay, you know, they're not, they're not going to – it's not going to go bad. Uh, things will stay good. Health will stay up. Uh, I need to, I need to go give them some straw. So, yeah, their straw is looking a little bare. So we'll go bump. Ah, crap. Where are we caught? go far enough out. I may have to go to a bigger barn. I'm not sure. Ah! Now I got another little TARDIS. It's a small one. That's what I was using over at the horse ranch. Um, I think I'm actually going to start switching to that for the feed. Because you can see I put too much in this one and it over overstocked the barn. So if I use a little one, maybe that will... Uh, be better so I'm gonna throw hey I'm gonna throw straw in here somewhere we'll fill it up because whatever I don't dump in there I'll dump in the feed lot I do have the feed lot going well 
Oh, correction. <laughs> God, I'm a little off here. So, uh, in the cattle pen, I've got, uh, oh, 90, about 110 head. And they're in pretty good shape for food. Uh, straw, they're not in bad shape. So, we had a second chicken coop. And it, we built an exact duplicate of the other one, 500 chickens. So we're ramping up our egg production. And I'll tell you guys here in a little, I'll show you guys here in a little bit why. You'll start seeing straw fill in the bays there. To see all the bays filling up where the cow lay down. Gives them a place to bed down. Didn't take much straw. <clears throat> they were in pretty good shape already. Now this little case Max 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 Maxim with two X's. <laughs> Maxim C V 145. It's a good little tractor. He like said it's only 175 horse, but it does everything I need to do to take care of the critters. Like I said, these guys are in pretty good shape, so it won't take much. Yeah, it didn't take much. We'll dump this back in, back in the bin. That way, if it rains or snows, it doesn't get all moldy. Actually, I'm just going to leave it sit there because I'm probably going to need hay or something before then. But, but no, this is a good little tractor. I've got a quickie. Uh, uh, front loader with a Albert bucket but uh, you know it's it's not a very big tractor but you know what it's big enough to pull that fully loaded so feeding the cows uh, and the and the cattle I got Angus cattle up here in the feedlot I don't see the bull bulls in there somewhere There he is, straight across. No, that's a cow. I don't know where he's at. He's in there hiding somewhere. All right, I'll take you over and show you what we've done over at the uh, at the uh, greenhouses. So I'll uh, catch back up to you when I get over there. All right, so we're back over at the greenhouses. Greenhouses are going well. We just sold a load of honey not too long ago. And I need to probably empty my, my storage of my melons and everything is getting fairly full. I got all these bags of seeds sitting out of here, but now they're kind of useless because I discovered a better way of filling my greenhouses. And I just did it, so I, I can't do it now. 
but an auto wagon using bulk seed, which I put in my silo here, which I'll show you where we got that here in a minute because we did some uh, expansion down at the co-op in the last month and a half. But uh, yeah, so I got plenty of seed here and I got another probably 250,000 liters at the main ranch. But uh, yeah, we just hook up the auger wagon with my other little, uh, here's my other Maxim 145 that I'm using. Um, and I'll be able to get rid of this. Well, I won't get rid of it just in case, but we'll go ahead and next go around we'll use up all those bags of seed and then we'll uh, then we will uh, go straightly to the grain auger but it's just nothing more than a grain auger uh, I picked this Bergman uh, GTW 330 just 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 cuz uh, kinda was one of the first ones with the big enough I wanted a big capacity so I didn't have to run back and forth so I can literally, it's still got seed on it from when I filled it up. I think it's like, I don't know how much it's got in it. About half. Kind of see through the little window there. It's about half full. So so one go around filled up all my, uh, all my greenhouses. So looking at the production. Apples are going uh, very well. I've got some of my apple trees. The boys are automatically taken over to the apple processing plant. Um, and they're just keeping up with that. I just dropped off some sugar from the sugar. Uh, went over to the sugar uh, sugar plant up here. Where is it? Right here. The sugar plant, sugar mill, uh, the, these guys did that I own 20% of. But uh, yeah, so looking at our production here on our melons, watermelon, and I'll show you the. We'll go down to lumber yard and I'll show you the expanded lumber yard operations too. Um, yeah, so I just unloaded strawberries. Uh, we didn't sell them. We took them to production. Uh, I, I'm storing. I'm not automatically sending production because production, uh, we'll show you that here in a little bit when we leave here. But uh, yeah, now that the lettuce and tomatoes I will sell at the market. We'll talk about the iron furnace here in a minute. But here's my melons. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting quite a few melons and watermelons stored up. Um, so I'm very pleased with where this is going. This is going to make us some money. And uh, we'll talk about the mini BGA. Um, we talked about that already. That uh, That's part of the co-op deal that my wife set up down there by the uh, farmer's market with those folks. And the dairy folks um, but we've expanded some operations down there so uh, yeah we got some stuff going on sugar mill uh, like I said we just uh, took all their outgoing sugar and we, we took it to production and we'll show you that in a minute but uh, yeah the wood turner is part of our expanded uh, expanded production at the lumber area we'll sh I'll show you that here in a little bit but yeah better way of feeding Fill in the uh, fill in the greenhouses. All right. Well, I'll show you. Uh, uh, we'll catch up to you when I get over to the uh, to the uh, farmers market and co-op. All right. So there's our farmers market. And if you remember from an episode or so ago, the wife we moved to the apple plant down here and they built a little mini uh, BGA which has been very helpful because I've been uh, now that I got the feedlot going and the cow, cow barn going we've been supplying this with slurry and manure uh, quite a bit so we completely disassociated ourselves with the other co-op 
and since we bought the trucks that they were using we brought them with us over here we added a big water tank um, and uh, the pallet trailer to haul pallets of juice uh, apple juice and uh, whatnot doesn't travel well in the back of a street bed so what we've added we've added this is a farm supply factory and this is a hundred percent owned by this co-op the dairy people us and the farmers market folks now the dairy people um, that's a straight dairy we give them milk they bottle it and sell it but we also take milk over I'll show you that in a second but this is the farm supply factory so I can I can dump grass in here and come up with hay we haven't got that anywhere yet but I also do total mixed rations and I'm not doing any TMR right now um, I'm just no reason to when I got hay and silage on hand already um, but I we brought in some stone and I had some soybeans in, in a couple different places and so we brought soybeans in and dumped them all out and we are getting mineral feed um, out of here too so uh, we're stocking the mineral feed up and we've got about 38,000 liters of mineral feed right now. Grass silage, we're bringing in grass in, it turns in into silage. Um, we did have some uh, grass stored up, so we brought it in. And uh, we got some silage, if I run out of silage, uh, and if we can sell off any extra. So that's where we're getting some of our silage. Now we're taking some of the uh, chaff and water and that was why we needed that water trailer we're getting silage plus digestate now we're storing the digestate up right now but uh it's a it's a bonus so uh, we're getting silage and digestate out of both of them so we brought in some of our wheat so it, we're, we're getting seed production and that's where we just filled up our two bins we just emptied this there's about 600 uh not 600 uh 60 some thousand i don't remember how much it was there was a lot this was almost full that's 500 yeah so 460,000 maybe that's what it was of seeds and so we took those we emptied this out moved it over there but we've got some corn in here and between the corn and wheat that we dumped in here we're getting quite a bit of seeds and we'll sell some of that off uh, but we got lime coming in with some stones but here's what we're using our digestate for to make uh, liquid fertilizer and our solid fertilizer that we're using on our two different types of, of seeders and planters so I got I got one planter that takes solid and one planter that takes liquid so uh, or cedar, excuse me. And then uh, the pig food, we're not selling it, but we're getting some pig food. Where was it off of? We're getting pig food off of something. Maybe that was on the other one. All right, it's on the other one. But anyway, so you can kind of see what we're what we what we got out going here. We've got some hay we're storing. Uh, mineral feed and uh, lime and uh, we did empty the lime this lime we had about uh, oh almost a million liters of lime so we took a bunch of it back over to our place but this is a farm factory and we got this thing going we've got some weed in here we're producing flour we're storing it pig food here we go so we so in the production of flour the uh, there's some excess byproduct that is turned into pig food so we get some pig food and we're selling that off um, bread same thing some of the byproducts is turned into pig feed and we're also selling cakes so I'm bringing all my eggs in here and my milk 
and uh, when I empty my milk, which I need to do because it's on about three quarters full, uh, when I bring that over here, we'll fill this up, and then the excess I'll take over to the dairy. Um, we're not doing any sugar, but uh, we got sunflower oil going and canola oil going. Um, so I think yeah, we're we're pretty full up on those. We emptied uh, some of some of Mr. Wilson's for that, but we got butter going. Um, we're storing that. That's all going straight over to the uh, butter and cheese are going straight over to the uh, farmer's market. Um, we've got some cotton coming in that we had uh, that uh, we bought. I didn't have any, but uh, a couple of the neighborhood farmers bought some, so they brought it in and we bought it from them. And we're making this fabric and this, we've got a small production of clothing and we got our own uh, Elk Mountain clothing line going we're selling that and so yeah so that's so farm factory and farm supply these are two if you're a big outfit and we have grown you need to invest in these two uh, two items um, they aren't too awful expensive. As soon as I save content, I find it here. Firewood. Farm factory. It's only fifty thousand to build the building, and then the farm supply is just past here somewhere. Somewhere. No mystery. Oh, it's in here too, but it, it's fifty thousand as well. So for a hundred grand, you've got a source to take almost every product that you could possibly produce on your farm and sell the end result and make money off of it. And now, can you make as much money if you sold the products directly? I haven't really looked at that um, but I think we're making more money because I'm getting constant stream of income coming in um, versus yearly when I sell crop production so while I may not be making as much if I sold it right off the bat with the fluctuating prices of the grain market I think I'm getting a better end of the deal because I'm selling a raw I'm not selling a raw product I'm selling finished products and we're making money all right so let's go check out the uh, lumber I'll, 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 uh, I'll see you here in a second when we get over there all right so we are over here at the lumber yard now this this area has grown too so something happened recently um, The guys that own most of 80% of the uh, lumber yard uh, sold out. They sold it all over to me. They they came to me and asked, "Hey, we want to we want to sell out to you." So I now own the lumber yard lock, stock, and barrel. So we've added a couple of things. Um, part of that purchase was the art easel framing shop, uh, the flooring shop. And uh, uh, what is this carpet? I forgot what this is. I don't get over here. The other carpet, woodworking shop, make furniture. Um, I had some of the uh, workers down here build some houses. They asked if they could build houses or move houses in. We moved some houses in. I paid for the movement of their houses. I moved. We can move that house in and these two houses over here. So I've got uh, five of the workers. There's two guys living in this house. There's a family, a guy and his family live in that house, a guy and his family live in the rent house, and there's three guys that live together in this house. And they all work down here in the lumber yard, along with uh, this guy here. Um, 
So we had a company come in, wanted to buy any of our excess. So they asked if they could put a shed in. Um, and so anything that we don't want to sell or we can't sell or is excess to our needs, we put in the, in the uh, shed or, or dump in the, in the, the, the storage there and uh, they come and get it. So we've expanded greatly. The biodiesel, the bio, uh, city's bio plant up there on the hill has been buying every load of sawdust or wood chips that we can transport over them. So we wound up investing in our own truck and trailer. And then we had so much lumber from up there on the hilltop. We'll, we'll go up there after I'm done there and I'll show you there that we've got lumber stored all over the place up here and so we wound up getting a, a it's easier to load it on the trailer and then drop it from the trailer to wherever we need it but uh, the shingle shingle plant is going well um, they're producing shingle they're now shipping shingles all over the United States uh, the wood shop they're making furniture it's going all over the place um, these guys are making uh, hand-turned items, tables, uh, banisters, and they're shipping all over the place. Um, this wood shop is making furniture, and, and it's kind of a modular furniture, and it's it's going, uh, it's shipping everywhere. And then we just recently had a. Uh, oh, it's about 20 miles away, but a uh, winery came in. And they had a great need for barrels, so we added a barrel shop. We built a barrel shop, and so we got a bunch of barrels that we're selling to them. And then this is a this shop was here, and it's all uh, what do you call it? Uh, office furniture, those desks, and crap like that. whatever you call it cubicles that's the word I'm looking for yeah cubicles. so yeah so that's that's the lumber operation it is it is gone gangbusters and if we take a look at the production on that it was a million dollar investment it cost me 1.1 million but I was able to sell off a, a lot of wood to buy all this um, so yeah, so we got all this furniture going on here. Um, where am I at? Here's another furniture plant. I'm gonna make an armor. This is the fancy place. And then the, the wood staircases and pepper grinders and bowls. And then uh, the floor tile. You know, we're, we're doing really well on that. And then a couple of our carpet shops that make the furniture. And then our barrels, barrels, buckets, and they make bathtubs too, special specialty bathtubs. Um, I'm making a few. We're, we're, it's it's sales of those has been going up a little bit. Weirdly, oddly enough, picture frames have been selling like gangbusters as are east as are the easels. They got uh, um, I don't say a contract, but they've got a couple universities that have big art programs that uh, they're they're sending these picture frames to um, and then our, our main our main plant which is that big one behind just behind me um, you can see we're you know I'm, I've got wood sitting there and we're out of space on the planks um, you know so I'm gonna have to come down here and have a chat with the boys and we're gonna have to uh, maybe take some of that sell it off maybe uh, see if, call these guys and see if they want any of it uh, get rid of some of it that way because because our plant up here which uses planks is full also and as you can see they I don't know what the hell happened here but my driver dumped off a load of longer trees and 
Somehow they got all stacked up on there. I don't know where the uh, tractor is with the hooks, but yeah, you can see the f pilots are full on the on the uh, the pilots of planks are stacked up there on the on the uh, flooring factory. So yeah, it's uh yeah, it's gone big. All right, folks, well, we'll uh, take a trip up and I'll show you what's going on up at the lumber or at the clear cut area where we put in those uh, fields and uh, where we got all the lumber stacked up. All right. Oh. So it's taken me a while to get over here, about an hour, uh, hour after I last spoke to you, an hour and a half, maybe almost two hours, I forget what time it was. We haven't done anything good better to the road. The road's still in sort of rough shape. I need to level it out, but it's still a lot easier to navigate than that windy hairpin turn road of the mountain. Our grass is growing in really well. Yeah, we got a couple trailers sitting here, ready to go. Let me show you this area. So if you remember, this was all forest ground. Now I've already plowed some of it under. We had a, a it's just now getting above freezing, but uh, last week, first week of February, we had uh, some warm weather. It was up in the 40s, so I brought the tractor up here and started disking this up so we can get the rocks off. But we went clear down here. This is going to be our largest hay field yet. Um, matter of fact, with so much hay, I might be able to take some of those smaller hay meadows down below. And between these three big hay fields, I should have enough hay to supply my needs and I can take those smaller fields down below and uh, convert them to maybe to carrots. Or maybe sugar beets. Maybe we'll add some cotton. I don't know. We'll see how cotton goes. But uh, yeah, we closed down because it was freezing up here. And it got real cold. But uh, yeah, we got we us. The lumber yard is so full of wood that I don't have any space down there to haul it. So we've got wood piled up all over the place, even up the top of the road, make sure I don't hit any logs, even at the top of the road, I got wood piled up here too, that we brought in from, uh, from the uh, end of our field here. So this was our uh, our northern limit. If we look at the map, and show you where I'm at. So the fence is our northern limit of uh, what we own. Um, so that's all owned by those guys. So yeah, so the lumber operation has been a very big success and I think I've got enough wood stacked up that we can get by until after all the summer harvest. We can focus on our farming operation. and. Uh, We'll come back up here and log some more. I need to get, uh, now that we've got hay meadows up, my plan is to replant uh, any, any harvested areas. Um, kind of give back to the, give back to the community. All right, well, let me, I'm gonna show you up something else. Um, we made an investment in. 
I'm gonna talk about that here in a second when we get up to the mine. All right. Whoa. I hate it when I do that. Get my arm on the door and hit the door handle. So, you remember the gold mine kind of, they, they kind of teetered out. Um, they kind of just ticked it off and teetered it. Teetered. Teetered? Is that even a word? I don't know if you watch Yellowstone, teeters a character. But uh, the gold was just not panning out, so they closed it down. But So, I had a buddy that was doing some essay work. Essay? Essay? Not essay. Assessment? I don't know. Surveying for the mine. They wanted to try and sell this. They discovered a huge iron ore deposit underneath where all of these... This used to be where the, the uh, wash plants or the, the gold protection facilities were and the mine tore those down and sold off all the buildings and all the equipment um, but these old boys are from a mining iron company in out on frontier now I met these guys when I was out on the frontier helping my I don't see anybody around um, helping my buddy uh, See if anybody's in the office. When I was helping my cousin Ted, if you remember that, nope, nobody in the office. Oops. When I was helping my cousin Ted, I ran into these guys and they helped me with getting my uh, that tr truck with the forage harvester and the, and the trailer together to pick up iron. I don't see anybody in the shop either. Well, anyway, there's a. Uh, they've got four guys, one guy up here running this area, and three guys down in in the in the shaft, um, doing the actual mining, and then there's a supervisor for each one of these little facilities. But the gold piles up, or not gold, the uh, iron ore just piles up, and then. Uh, I kind of was thinking maybe they'd do some conveyor belts or something, but or hauling it with a scoop. But this is what they're doing. I'm going to show you because they let me do it. So now I don't own any part of the this part. What I own part of, I own 10% of the smelting plant. They bought the land, they built all the facilities, and I invested 10% in the smelting plant. So I get 10% of the production of metal, which is great because that goes, that goes to my barrel making facility.
Yeah, they just don't. Anyway, they are, I guess, drive this up to the pile and suck the pile in the back and dump it off. I asked them why they, I asked them why they didn't just get the conveyor belts and they said because it's cheaper to run a truck and dump than uh, it is to run conveyor belts. I'm like, okay, whatever works. But um, I wonder where they all at. They must have taken off because there's a third vehicle. It's not here. They must have hit it into town or something. As you can see, I, I didn't forget to show you that. They're loading up. Well, we'll take a look. I guess I could have just opened the gate, but that's just a hassle too. They're loading up a production to transport off to sell. Uh, they'll dump. I think out of, out of a load I get four, so these four will probably be mine. They'll dump that off at the uh, barrel factory. And then they'll take the rest to wherever it's being delivered to. So yeah. All right, well, we're gonna head back to the ranch. I'll see you there. All right, well, we're, we're back at the ranch. I, it's a little later than I want. It's a little after four. I got delayed. To the, just as I was leaving, those guys were coming back, so I stopped and talked to them. But yeah, so uh, I had the snow plowing. We had a lot of snow this winter, so a couple of big snows, but uh, so yeah. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this one or not. This is my uh, Puma 240. My case Puma. It's my silage uh, tractor. Actually, it's a it's a medium tractor. Mediums. So it's 270 horse, but uh, I've got it set up for packing silage and uh, this is what I use when I fill up my wagon uh, with silage so uh, yeah and I got the big if you remember the Steiger 620 I'd like to get my hands on one of those new 715s but but uh, actually my uh, my 400 Magnums my 400T twin turbos these are 700, they got 700 horsepower a piece. So I got two, the other one's up, up front. This is just a normal uh, 400. And he's, uh, let's just show you these guys. So my Steiger, he's 692. Um, so my big 400 Magnum. He's a 886 horse. He's big. And then I've got my normal 400, 435. Um, and then my other, my other Magnum 400. So I got the two. And they're not, this is just a replica. They're not, like, one's black and one's red. And they don't have duels. They, like, you know. There's the black one. I've got snow plow hooked up to it, or the snow blower hooked to it. And, uh, I'm not sure where my other one is. Oh, it's up there at the field with the disc. <laughs> yeah, I'm using it to, to put that field in. So it's sitting up, up, up on the hill, up on the clear cut. So, that's where we're at, guys. Uh, it's like I said, it's been a busy, uh, January, February, and we're, you know, we're sitting at 1.2 million right now. Um, before I bought into the, uh, before I bought out the lumber yard and I invested in that uh, smelter, I was up around almost four. But we're finally meeting. 
finally making our, our uh, we're finally making a profit. Um, we'll see what the cattle cattle market does to see if we make anything off of them, but uh, I think we will. Um, we're we're self sufficient at this point, and that's where I wanted to be um, towards the end of my first year. And next month will be the first year into into year one. Um, so. At the end of year one, we are profitable. We've expanded our productions, expanded the greenhouses and the beehives. We've kind of just created some industry that we own and can count on for ourselves and we don't have to count on price fluctuations with uh, the grain markets and uh, outside influence but uh yeah so that's where we're at i'm pretty happy pretty satisfied we'll see what year two brings um with the fault with the harvest but uh pretty happy well gang thanks for watching uh hit that like and hit that subscribe i appreciate all all of those you have subscribed and we'll see you in the next episode